Lego, what are you doing? Stop milking this topic! Hey, you know, I'm not the one who calls the shots here. Well, really I am because it is my YouTube channel. I'm just talking about things that I think are very, 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 very interesting. And just because we mention a slight existence of a topic in one video does not mean that we are prohibited from making a full-on video about it in the future, which is exactly what we're doing here. Let's build off of the idea that I presented in the video I made a few weeks ago, where we talked about the Vancouver Canucks draft drama. The whole riff between Jim Benning and Judd Brackett, the whole thing where Judd Brackett reportedly wants more control over the scouting department, and Jim Benning apparently wants to get in there a little bit more than what Judd Brackett is comfortable with, and it's caused a very big insecurity in the eyes of many Canucks fans and media as to how the scouting department is going to look going into the future. A lot of this does have to do with discussions that were put on the radio and tweets that we have discussed in detail on this YouTube channel. But we're revisiting some of these tweets because there was a brief little existence of one idea within those tweets that I looked at and I was like, you know, that in itself is a video. That's a video right there. So let's talk today about how the Vancouver Canucks management apparently was super high on Philip Broberg. And the only reason they actually listened to the scouts and went with Pod Colson instead of Broberg is because Broberg was off the board. We're revisiting the same topics brought up by J.D. Burke on TSN 1040 a few days ago. We're skipping over onto the tweets where they talk about Pod Colson. Let's talk about what J.D. Burke says over here. General managers always make the first round pick, but in 2019, there was real debate over the 10th overall pick. It was bordering on acrimonious, according to sources, about investing in Pod Colson, whose scouts rated highly, or Philip Broberg, whose defensive instincts aren't there. Acrimonious means hateful. There's acrimony in the discussion that's going on over here. And that is an ugly, ugly word to use, although if it is accurate, then it kind of tells a very bigger picture than if that word was not in the sentence. But, although Broberg had bad defensive instincts, he had a good U18s. This becomes a sincere debate, and Jim Benning acquiesces and drafts Pod Colson because Broberg went 8th. So... This is kind of the idea that I wanted to bring up. The idea that the management and the scouting department were fighting so hard internally, according to just the inference that I'm making off of this one tweet, on whether or not to take Broberg or Pod Colson. The only reason they went with Pod Colson is because Benning didn't have the option of drafting Broberg. This begs the question, hey, if the Edmonton Oilers go with somebody else, they draft the consensus next best available player in, I don't know, a Trevor Zagres or a Cole Caulfield, and assuming the Anaheim Ducks go with another forward, do the Vancouver Canucks take Broberg over Pod Colson? That's something that many people will have in the back of their minds upon reading this little thread over here. When it comes to the Jim Benning draft picks, and the Judd Brackett draft picks. We've talked about Jake Vertanen being a Benning guy, and the scouts honestly wanting Larkin. Okay, that's a video we made a few days ago. We talked in 2018 and 2017 about Pedersen and Hughes, and how the scouting department wanted those players. But... The pick that we haven't talked about so far in any of these videos was the 2016 first Ole Olevi to which Ian McIntyre reports that Yolevi was actually Benning's pick in 2016, because the GM wanted a D-man, and he loved what he saw from the Finn at the World Juniors. Benning is believed to have gone with Judd Brackett's first-round pick recommendation ever since. So that's PD in 2017, that's Hughes in 2018, and that's Pod Colson in 2019. Benning was the guy who chose... Jake Vertanen and Yolevi, 
Apparently, for Besser, it might have probably just been a bracket pick because that was in the 20s and that was an American guy that not too many people were super high on. But one may ask, if the scouting department and the management have gotten into such a debacle where conflict is inevitable with the way things are right now, it raises a very serious question that says, hey, there probably exists a very real possibility that the Canucks would have gone with Broberg over Podkolzin at 10th overall if both of them were available. Now, for Broberg, it's kind of interesting because I've been chronicling Broberg for so long. The guy even used one of my thumbnails as his Twitter header for a brief period of time, but I've been making so many videos about Broberg that I understand the positives and the negatives. The positives are that, yes, this guy is an elite potential puck-moving offensive defenseman. But the negatives are sometimes it looks like the guy doesn't have a brain out there when he doesn't have the puck on his stick. It's very bipolar with Philip Broberg in regards to how good he is capable of playing in and out of the defensive zone. The biggest inconsistencies in the 2019 top prospects laid in Philip Broberg, and that's why, to me, he was a guy that I didn't really want to take. I saw the ceiling there for sure, but I also saw the downsides. So, the idea where Philip Broberg goes ahead of Pod Colson and the Canucks choose the Swedish D-man over the Russian forward who has improved over time, it's something that does kind of strike a chord with me. Now, I will say, I wasn't necessarily the highest on Pud Colson either. I think if you watch my draft reaction, you can kind of tell that I wasn't expecting Pod Colson to be on the Canucks radar, and I was somewhat disappointed that we didn't draft Caulfield, but as time has gone on, Pod Colson has gotten better, and he's shown to people that the best that we saw in Pod Colson at the U18s, the Ivan Halinka, etc., can come back to play once in a while, and it's only a matter of time before we start to see that side of him showcase itself more and more in the KHL. For Broberg, though, he's a guy who he has gotten better, I will say that, 8 points in 45 games as a Swedish D-man, an 18-year-old in the SHL, it's totally not bad. But even a guy like Victor Soderstrom had so many more points, and Soderstrom was a guy that the Canucks somewhat were interested in as well. So, for me to sit here and think about the possibilities of the Canucks drafting Broberg over Pud Colson, it kinda, you know, feels a little bit weird. Especially with the idea that it was Benning who wanted Broberg, compiled with Benning's track record of drafting people in the past in the first round. Benning had Vertanen, who isn't really a great pick now compared to who was available, but at the same time, that was pressure from the management, it was a new GM, etc. That's kind of a pass, in my opinion. But then you have Yolevi. If it was Jim Benning who said, yes, I want this Yolevi guy, it's this guy, he is our guy, I'm going to take this guy, and the scouts, nah, sorry guys, but I'm going with my guy and Oli Yolevi. And he says the same thing about Broberg in 2019, so much to the point that the scouting department and the management get into an acrimonious debate over who to take, a hateful debate, a bitter debate, then I'm not sure what to think. Because Benning's track record of being the guy to draft the players hasn't been amazing. Yolevi, at the time, seemed like an okay pick today. It is not a good pick, especially compared to what other players after Yolevi were able to do. Sure, later down the line, the pick can seem to be good, but today, in 2020 May, it's not a good pick. So, if Benning's confidence is so high on players to the point where he is willing to disregard Judd Brackett and only acquiesce if the player that he wants is taken before he picks, then we may be in a weird spot right here. This is no anti-Philip Broberg video by any means, but I will say that if I had the choice between drafting a Pod Colson or a Broberg, I would say Pod Colson, especially with the way he has developed throughout the past calendar year and the way that he has become so much of a better player. So, to think that the Canucks almost drafted Broberg instead of Pod Colson, and only didn't because of the matter that he wasn't there, kinda irks me out a little bit too. So, Comment down below what you think about this topic. 
I know I'm stretching it a lot, but I really wanted to hammer that point home that this is probably the horizon of something really, really strange to come. But again, I hope you enjoyed this video. So, that's Rose 99. And bye.